Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordon and we are back for some more Rogue Trader. Sorry, I just noticed, did this symbol just change? <laughs> the chemicals? Or was it always like this? Feels like a different symbol to me. I might be wrong. <laughs> um, so, we have this fight right here against Drukari Void Ships, which is preventing access to Viable 7. And before I go for this fight, I want to try something different because I've been using, um, you know, torpedoes, which I like a lot. But I've also been wondering, given that I can reload my macro cannons and my lance weapons, I want to see how effective I can be with more lance weapons and see if I can have a lot of power at the start of a fight. So I will take this one here, the Mazoa Lance Weapon, instead of Torpedoes. So right now I'm going to have a medium range Lance Weapon, a Dorsal Lance Weapon, another Lance Weapon, and then I have two Macro Cannons. And see how this plays. I do love the Torpedoes. I like them a lot, but I want to see how effective it can be to just shoot the lance weapons twice. Alert! The Drukari have blocked some of your flagship's posts using an unknown Xenos power. Your crew will regain control of these posts in several rounds. Complete contract. Stations, oh no, I just report when press anything. Ready. Okay. Oh, I actually won the initiative? I am very surprised. Last Hatred Frigate. Okay, so, um, let's see, if I'm here, can't actually, oh, really? Okay, I can reach with this one, and, well, this is the, an example of a fight where having the torpedoes would just be better for me. Yep, straight up would be better for me. It said it blocked something, but nothing seems to be blocked, unless it's this. I don't know. So these guys have this stupid shadow field, which means we're gonna have a lot of trouble to actually hit them, unless they shoot me. Oh, I can do this, Arc Augury. <clears throat> the next shot, even if I gave it plus two, it doesn't reach. Neither does this one. Oh, I'm sad. Okay. So let, let's just do what we can do here. I will move over here. Onward. I will fire my Mazoa Lance weapon over there. Lead them. Okay, we just missed everything. Ah, I see. So you can, I okay. Yeah, so there is no point in having two Lance weapons here because you can only shoot one apparently. So yeah, I do want to torpedoes back. Okay, so what am I gonna do? Um, if I move over here, I'm just kind of putting myself in a more vulnerable position, perhaps? Not that I have too many more options, though. <clears throat> uh, well, I am committed to this. It's not a great idea, but... This one's going down. Okay, and if I reload this, can I use this again? No, only this one. Okay, that was a mistake then, because now I can't shoot it. <laughs> Live and learn. Uh, do I want to uh, change its position? I think I do. Yeah, bitch, turn that way. <clears throat> and we just... Oh! Oh, he actually put his booty in range. Okay, we missed, so... Same effect. Help me, my friend, help me. Okay, thank you. Pew, pew, pew. Good damage. I'm gonna get shot. Whoa! What the hell was that? 
How many shots were he... Those are a lot of shots. That's not fair. Okay, shoot him. Thank you. Just focus there. Yeah, ignore me. Look at that. Look at... Strike them now. What? Nothing. The hell, dude? Is it this thing? Holy crap. This just blows up. <laughs> okay. I can almost kill this guy. But not quite. So I would like to try and shoot him in my acceleration phase so I can then reload my weapons. Never mind, it's in cooldown. So I can shoot him like this. I can shoot him like this. 54 to 82. 18 to 28. I think this fires like multiple times, I feel. Okay. Okay, so let's do this then. This one's going down. Location through blessed plasma. Fire. I am not going to complain. Was that a critical hit? Oh, the lens pulses. Twenty-eight damage. No, it was not a critical hit. It was just. A normal hit. I don't know why it hit for so much, but I will definitely take it. Uh, let me see if I can turn more towards this side. Does it even make a difference? Possibly not, <clears throat> but still. So if I do this, I think I have him. Even if this doesn't kill him, I think I can just ram him. Bleed them. Okay, see if you like this, bitch. The dark yeah, gangster. <laughs> we leveled up. Cool. Ghost plates and 68 scrap. <clears throat> I will repair my ship and see about the upgrade. Okay. So. Let me just think about this and I will be back in a second. Okay, so it turns out I had to think a little bit more about this because I wasn't expecting to have what they call ultimate post abilities. Uh, so for the advanced abilities, I'm going to be taking a shallow jump here. There's, there's a couple of things I was considering. I was considering reinforced shields, uh, focused efforts, strafe, and also shallow jump. I'm going to go for this one here. Just make a shallow warp jump in a forward direction of five cells. I think it can help us maybe, you know, catch up to some enemies that are farther away from us or maybe get out of range of something. The same thing for the strafe, but given that we have, um, uh, not this one, this one, new heading, I think we have good enough maneuverability for the most part. And then over here, the new things are as follows. We have boarding party. The flagship launches a boarding party to infiltrate an enemy ship, starting internal fires and possibly causing engine damage that cripples the ship for one round. Can be used only once per round, and the duration is plus one round for every 10 points in the post officer's persuasion skill. So we do have a lot of persuasion. So I'm imagining that duration just makes it so that the fires will last for longer. However, <coughs> looking at this here, the internal fires... Uh, the ship will suffer from 5 to 10 damage each round. That's really not a lot, right? The one thing I like about this is that it seems like it's guaranteed damage. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a missed chance or anything like that. Uh, I wish I knew what this engine damage and crippling the shield meant. I imagine it means... It has less maneuverability for one round, but it doesn't really specify it here. We have all hands on deck, which is, I think, the one I'm going to be taking. The flagship's torpedo tubes are loaded with three torpedo salvos instead of one. So if we can deploy three batches of torpedoes, I think I'm going to like that a lot. And duration, again, I'm not sure how duration will affect this, but... 
Uh, one more round for every 10 points in the post officer's demolition skill. Sure. We have Corpus Cari Chant. At the end of each turn, the most damaged sector of the flagship's shields restores up to 50% of its strength. Duration plus one round for every 10 points in the post officer's tech use skill. Uh, I don't like where it says up to. What does this mean? Do I roll between 1 and a 50 and depending on the roll it will get restored? Or will it always restore 50% if it has more damage than 50%? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, we have maximum overdrive. Until the end of combat, the flagship's speed is increased by 2 and its maneuverability is increased by 1. The bonus damage dealt by Voidship Ram, based on the distance traveled, is increased by 100%. <clears throat> so this is actually... This actually seems quite powerful, even though we aren't ramming enemies that much. Because I think we also take damage by doing that. Uh, we also have Impedian Storm, which I also like it a lot. <laughs> The flagship makes seven attacks, each of which targets a random enemy in an eight cell range and deals from eight to 14 warp damage. So not a lot of damage, but it's a lot of attacks. And again, duration, I don't know what this means. And finally, premonition. The flagship's augurs scan the area for favorable tactical positions. While the flagship is in such a position, its evasion is increased by 35%. Cool, not sure. Uh, how this would play, but seems like a cool build to have. For now, I will be taking all hands on deck. I was kind of between these two, because this doesn't miss, is what I'm thinking. But Or, or I assume it doesn't miss. But three torpedoes instead of one sounds very nice. So let's go with this. And I am going to... Your ship now has access to an ultimate ability. It can drastically change the tide of battle. Oh. Hmm. Try using an ultimate ability and see for yourself. Note that you can only use one ultimate ability per combat. Ah. Okay. Ultimate abilities are so powerful that they take a significantly longer time to recharge. When using ultimate abilities, be aware that they may still be on cooldown the next time you enter battle. The next time you enter battle? What? The ship's ultimate cooldown bar gradually fills up on each of your flagship's turns in combat at the end of each turn and as a result of certain events during space exploration. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna take this off. Uh, this lance weapon here. And I will bring back my torpedoes because I want them. There we go. And we're gonna explore, I'm guessing, Viable 6. Hopefully, we're going to get some, some cool quests here. Swift and Merciless Retribution is a proper fate for many transgressors, but the Imperium permits using the convicts for hard labor on distant prison worlds like Viable 6. To atone for their crimes before humanity, hundreds of thousands of rogues and lowlifes toiled in the mines of the Von Valentis Protectorate until death from exhaustion or some other unfortunate accident claims their forsaken souls. Pits of Viable 6. Nobody is required, so I will take my usual team. Kind of looks like the prison world that we were at earlier in the game. Hmm. Okay, so let's get this right, first of all. Okay. Dead people. Viable 6 always was a penal world, but this, even the miscreants of this place do not su deserve such a fate. The man's body is frozen in a natural pose. The corpse's fingers are crooked and its teeth are bared in a ghastly grimace. I suspect warp influence. The broken, slashed and gutted body is still covered with the shreds of a planetary warden uniform. This man clawed his throat right before he died. Poison? The caustic ooze gives off a sickening vapor that eats away at the lining of your nose and mouth, making your eyes water. This is me cutting onions. <laughs> Victory awaits! You are in a very weird position. 
And this looks like some kind of chaos sign. The bodies have been twisted into a pose resembling a servile bow and bound with barbed wire. God. A new challenge for me. You can clearly see several thin cuts left by bladed weapons on the body. Okay, we have goods over... Oh! Oh, but there's people here. Enthralled gladiators. Okay, so if they're enthralled, they're dominated. By what? We're gonna see. Tazara. The tall, light Xenos moves with the grace of an otherworldly predator. Maybe I should have brought in Yiliad for this. The creature gives you a dispassionate uh, glance and casually speaks a few words that are immediately picked up by your elucidator. Macandis, Alith. What is this? Has one of the sisters found an amusing trinket in the ruins and saved it as a special treat for the Archon? The Xenos takes a quick cloak over, your, over their shoulder towards the platform where a few more silhouettes in tar black armor can be seen. Death to Xenos. It seems it is I who is in for a, uh, for a treat. I cannot even begin to fathom where my subjects found such an exotic beast and a talking what it's had. Kneel, Xenos! By whose leave are you playing Lord of My World? The Xenos' eyes light up with interest. The Monkey understands my speech. Where did you come by a device that can translate our language? Are you trying to impress me by appearing useful? Such words will earn you about in the ring at most. Without weapons, and soon without your skin. Idira spits on the ground. If I'd been the one holding the device, she and I would have had words. I'd make sure the stuck-up bitch knew exactly what I think of her. The humans scattered around you on the platform stare as if they've seen a ghost. The eyes of some, betra uh, of some betray their fear, others glare with bestial hatred, and yet more look upon you with hope. Okay, so who are you? My name is known to everyone on this planet, Monkey. I am Tazara the Deliverer, Tazara the Benevolent, the one who grants respite from the choking grasp of this world. I decide who lives, who dies, and who finds new purpose for their existence in Komorag's many arenas. Surely this is why you have come, to, uh, you have come here? To fight for my ever-changing favor and for the privilege of being the first to be chained? Not quite. Okay. A lot of options. Okay, address the fighters in the arena. How could you stoop to this to killing one another for the amusement of the enemies of humanity? Okay. I presume the toxic atmosphere is your doing. It could be. Or perhaps my mere presence is enough to make base creatures like yourself forget how to breathe. Tazar lets out a nasty chuckle. Are you really surprised at what happened? You wove the net right under your own feet. We merely knocked out the pin and uh, that drew it close tight around you. A couple of volleys at the seals of the underground well, and the planet, the one you had turned inside out, did the rest. I hereby declare you a Category 3 Blasphemer for tampering with the sacred production cycle of this world's extractiums. The drill on Pascal's Mechadendrite springs to life with a howling screech. And your brethren finished what the planet had started. Oh, how they strive to please me and my entourage. How they slaughtered and tortured their own kin for, my, uh, for mine and my sister's delight. How they decorated this little arena with still living Monkey. Did you think all that you see before you is the work of our hands? Think again. Okay, so clearly they are in, under some kind of domination, probably from the toxic atmosphere. But I'm still gonna ask this. So how could you stoop to this, to the, the fighters? To killing one another for the amusement of the enemies of humanity. A hulking brute who can barely stand, stand coughs up blood and wipes his lips. What? Was I supposed to lie down and die? The ones who survived the arena, the Xenos take them away. I saw humans boarding shuttles with my own eyes. They are going to take us away from here, you hear? Uh, you are very... Um, naive. This statement is false. You were supposed to furnish yourself with the means of respiratory protection and inflict maximum damage on the perpetrators before ceasing your vital functions. <laughs> yeah, who gives a shit about us convicts? The lanky buggers may keep me on a leash, but at least I'll be alive, not coughing up my lungs. How cruel you are to your unfortunate kin. These monkey have worked hard to entertain their elite audience. 
Each of them fights with a strength born of desperation, seeking to earn their place in my box of toys. There is always room for more. My toys do break so very easily. To be reduced to a Xeno's plaything, a shameful fate for the science of hum uh, humankind. Abelard falls silent, shaking his head in dismay. You ravaged the planet, wiped out millions of people, made those who survive bend the knee. You will pay for this. Am I not paying for our mischief already? Am I not saving the worthiest among your kin, gifting them the right to die for the delight of my brothers and sisters? What kind of abhorrent ingratitude is this? From the dusk behind Tazara comes a cry. The distance between you and the Xenos is too great for the elucidator to interpret the words, but the tone alone speaks of irritation and impatience. Tazara raises her blade and points it to you. Tell the other monkey that whoever slits your throat will depart for their new home ahead of schedule. And tell them to hold nothing back. Tonight they dance for Iremiris herself, the great archon of the cabal of the Reaving Tempest. Death to Xenos, death to heretics. Tell your Murmuris she's not going to like what she's about to see. We can try some kind of persuasion. Turn to the fighters in the arena, do you truly wish to die to Xeno's behest? If we join forces now, we can end this senseless carnage once and for all. Succeeded. Exhausted and defeated faces trade worried glances. The hulking brute next to you hesitates, then spits and breaks into a grin. We're going to die anyway, might as well do it without the heretic's brand. Slay the beasts! Tazara emits a furious scream and takes a step back, signaling to her companions. Yeah, screw you, bitch. Smite the Xenos! Smite the Xenos. Okay, so I guess that... Oh, they only have 32 HP. Oh, you poor people. You are not gonna last. And I'm dealing with... Wix? Not sure what these are. And... Hecatrix. Can I, can I not inspect you? Xenos. A lot of dodge. 14 movement points. Okay. Blast pistol. Ooh, 15 to 25. Okay, it's single shot only though. But it has a dark like blast which shoots everything in a line. Gotta be careful about that. And she also has a poisoned Ekatari blade. Monofilament grenades. Okay, power from pain. The Drukari gain 3 strength, 3 willpower and 1 temporary wound for each creature suffering burning, bleeding, stunned or toxin effects in a 5 cell radius. And burning touch of the warp. Whenever the Drukari suffer warp damage or are affected by psychic powers, they cannot use power from pain and lose all bonus of this will for 2 rounds. Nice. They additionally suffer 3 times willpower bonus to weapon skill and ballistic skill and to receive an additional 10% of maximum wounds damage from warp attacks and psychic powers for 2 turns. So, Idira and Cassia are gonna have some fun. My problem right now is that they are all behind cover. And I've been ambushed? Bitch, why? And Pascal's in the front? Oh, this is bad. This might actually be horrible. Okay, so I can't really shoot my eye beam because they have cover and I will also kill my friends. I can try to use point of curiosity to bring them towards this area. I'm not sure how effective that would be. I'm... Possibly thinking about giving Idira an extra turn just to lighten them and put poison on them and they lose for them to lose you know power from pain. Arjun is behind cover, which is cool. The reason why I'm uh, reluctant to use Argenta right now is because if I try to burst, I am going to be hitting uh, my friends here. Okay, so I feel like I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to give Idira an extra turn, see if I can hit some, and then maybe move Cassia over there or something like that. 
Okay, so Edita, I take this. Not a servitor. Let's get resolve. But of course. I will spread some prey Anything around. Else? Because otherwise I On typically it. forget it. Now let me see. This I imagine I cannot use. Oh, I can use this. Okay. 3 to 6, 7 damage. Versus 29 damage. Might as well just use this, I guess. I can get warp speed on someone. I imagine I'm going to give it to Abelard because I will want him to kind of start flanking around and going for them. Maybe trigger trigger the perils of the warp. Anything is. Just blast these bitches here. But of course. <laughs> That was actually a lot of damage. 66 and 64. Good. So now, let me see if this worked. Yeah, they have the burning touch of the warp. So they do have this penalty here. They're poisoned. Which is awesome. Stop mocking me. Uh, I kind of want to move Cassia over here, but 14 movement points might be problematic. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, he can reach me. So... But she can still play after this. So, okay, go there. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. Pass. I can give the extra turn to Idira again. And do the same thing over there. Or I can give it to Cassia. And perhaps start moving them. I think I will just go for Edita again. Okay, so... I can target myself. But I think I just want more resolve right now. Okay, so more resolve. Anything else? And with one action point, I think I'm going to give forewarning, possibly to Idira herself. We'll do. And I can blast those guys, or I can try and kill these, because they do also take extra damage from the warp. I think I'll just also debuff these. Was was that you? Or Wait, did I only hit one? No, this one was just very low damage. Oh, we triggered something so we can now use, for example, Iron Arm on Abelard. Anything else? Good. Power Conduit being lovely. Now, Cassia has fun. And how will Cassia have fun? I will want over penetration here. I will want backline. I suppose here. Isn't this a job for the sir? The front line remains to be seen. But I think I definitely want to give Reveal the Light to Idira and to Cassia. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So give me this, or give it. Wait. Me. I'm not accustomed to being. Uh, now I can give it to her. That's fine. Okay, whatever. Uh, if I do this, can I do it? Hmm. What do I also gain right now by bringing them closer to me? Probably nothing, right? Yeah, so maybe that's not the play. <clears throat> I think the play will be different. Yeah, I think the play will be different. So, I feel like I'm going to... Put Frontline here. Isn't this a job for the serfs? I can go back to where I was, possibly. Emperor. 
Give me strength. And I'm thinking about this air of authority, extra turn and blow them up. Me. Yep. If you insist, Lord Captain. If I may. Okay. So keep on doing this. No, I'll just do this right now because I would like to have one more action point. Okay. <clears throat> we don't get the bonus on the same turn, which is kind of sucky. But alright. And now we blast. But of course. Boom. Killed one, damaged the other one greatly. We are basically. <clears throat> on heroic act territory actually we, we just are I would love to give a, I would love to give this to Abelard and have him start moving forward and killing people Idira will play before them so she can even just maybe kill everyone yeah what am I saying just Idira have fun your death in colors. I have six AP, which means I can do this three times. Let's not even we'll do farewell. Mess around with this. Okay, one down. Gained one action point, so <sighs> just a minus that setback. You? That's fine, Four. get resolve. Can target that can I target this one? Like this? No. Well, this kills and has pain channeling as well. But this is 26 to 244. But this is a guaranteed 100 plus damage. I think I will just go for Psychic Shriek here. Yeah. Okay, so you die. Anything else? <laughs> she is here. Wait, where is my pain channeling? Did it go there? Pain channeling. Yeah, okay, it went there. So now, Psychic Shriek this guy. I'm gonna get one more AP for this. Does it make a difference? No. What an unfortunate turn of fate. Oh, cutscene? What is happening? Game. Okay. It's definitely a cutscene. I can see people over there. Two of the three of them are going away. What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so apparently there was a cutscene here, but the camera did not go there. So, Yermiris, I am bored of this farce, Tazara. Who rules this arena? You or the monkey? Archon Yermiris! Dracon Ma Marazai, you know the danger of repeating this. A misunderstanding. Draw your own conclusions. Your words are command, Archon Yermiris. Okay, so basically they're kind of upset. This guy took the pain channeling. Good. I can move Idira. I don't think it makes a difference because I can't see them. So, I suppose I will just... I think I will just maybe get in this cover here. And give warp speed to Avalard. He already has it. Okay, so Cassia? Sure. I'm a man. <laughs> we already have another one. Ah, oh, you lucky bitch. Oh, now I can play because... Oh my god, this is... This just stacks up so hard. Because I have another turn because we had an heroic act. I can give another heroic act to someone else, like Abelard, for instance. I'm just not sure if he will be able to reach that guy over there. But, I mean, might as well try, right? Nothing I can't do. Might as well try. So, I can give him voice of command. Game. 
Oh, too easy. Take Air of Authority. Even more momentum. Take Finest Tower. My time is now. Yeah, I think I'm not going to be able to reach. Okay, let's go for Brace for Impact Victory on everybody. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I can't actually hit him with the charge, but... I can get right next to him. Okay, so let's charge over here. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Alrighty. <clears throat> and now we do... Now I'm gonna check something before I forget. Arms Master. Killing an enemy to a melee attack makes all the Archmen's Centurion attacks this turn cost minus one AP. I can see this stacking up very, very strongly during these heroic act turns. Okay, so blam on you. It will be done. Target well struck. You call this a strike? I do call that a strike. Because look at this. At your back and call. One few Amazing, huh? And uh, I could move over here and and do I can't even reach him, right? Can't even reach. Uh, so just stay where you are, I suppose. You can get endured, and that will be all. I can stay what I am. Pass. Wow, this was all. This was all in Cassius' turn. And look at the movement points. I have 32 movement points. Because I feel this is bugged. Whenever a creature in combat gains an extra turn, the navigator gains a stacking 5 bonus willpower. <laughs> oh, this makes me happy. Um... Yeah, just just get away from there. There's no point in being in range from that guy. Now we have Argenta. Which means I can also have fun with that bitch over there. So I can go over here. I can shoot her in the face. Right, yes. The enemies of the Emperor will be undone. <laughs> And now we can swap for our heavy bolter and get wildfire and burst a bit. Seven. Hmm. Doubt is for the weak. Better. I'll do it. <laughs> I loved it. Man, I will say. Cassia is insanely powerful. Officers are insanely powerful. Grand strategist might just be actually broken. Because being able to play before anyone else is way too strong. Way too strong. Uh, thinking back, if I just wanted to have more efficiency, I would probably even give my character also grand strategist. I think it would be like insane turns. The surviving fighters turn their head towards you one after another. All eyes on the battlefield are glued to you. We have Iconoclast, which will likely be what I'm going to choose. Those who fought with me get to the shuttle. As soon as we are away from here, I will give orders for the immediate evac evacuation of the remaining survivors. Dogmatic. By destroying these foul Xenos, you have atoned for your transgressions against the Emperor. Get to the shuttle. The rest of you will be subject to selective punitive server <laughs> servitorization so that you may further toil for the good of the Imperium. I love Dogmatic. Stay on the planet with everyone else and wait until I decide what to do with you. I do not have time for this now. And heretical attack. <laughs> just kill them. Okay, so yeah. Iconoclast, let's just help them out. We got trophies. We gotta level up. We have people going for the shuttle. Which I'm not sure if it means I'm gonna get extra people resources. It would be cool. The body was partially flayed and judging by the amount of blood, the victim was still alive when it happened. Lovely. Hunter Carapace. It's a medium armor with 45% armor, which is very good. 
plus 10% armor if the weather is in half cover. I think it's worse than what she has. I would say it is. Oh! When the servants of the Omnissiah assembled the parts of this ancient mechanism, quiet clicks sounded from within and the cogs turned into motion. The metal plates of the Archaeotech compass parted, releasing a cascade of golden rays. A hololithic projection shines between the rays, a model of the star system Muro 79. One of its worlds is marked with an unknown symbol. Cool. Um, so yeah, this doesn't matter too much. What do you have? You have pirate chainmail. Uh, I think I would prefer the one he has because it's just more armor. This was the Inferno thingy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The man died clutching his intestines as he split from his lacerated stomach. <clears throat> but yeah, so these were Drukari enemies, right? The sacred engine meant to work in the quarry has not been used for a long time. I like that they call machines sacred. That? Oh, sacred mechanisms. Just cargo. None shall stand in my way. Okay. Okay, so what do you guys have? You have these weapons, <clears throat> which actually I feel deal quite a significant amount of damage for, you know, just a pistol. With 60% armor penetration, plus that dark light blast. Hmm. We have the poisoned Ekatari blade, which I assume it doesn't say here, but I'm guessing that this poisons. Yeah, poisons the enemies with toxin, which uh, suffer damage. Doesn't say how much. I wish it said how much. Okay, the same thing. Oh, no, no, no. Blast pistol and splinter pistol. I think this is what Jay uses. And then they have... Oh, give me a second. And then they have Wick Armor. 25% la Okay, this, this sucks. So this can all go away. I mean, 17... 15 to 17, it's not bad. But he, he can't use it anyway, so let, let's just forget about it. I will keep one of each with me. Okay. They're gone. Thrown as my witness, we will find these blasphemous scratches and make them pay for everything that happened here. Yeah, so basically their leaders escaped. It's about time. The body is missing parts of its extremities. It was hacked to pieces with dozens of strikes. Was, was this all... That this place had to offer. Victory awaits. Wasn't this like a main quest? Yeah, it was. Wait for a response from Dargonus. Viabo 6 has been purged of Xenos, but the raid leaders have evaded capture. Information about the pillaging of Viabo 6 has already been sent by the Astropathic Choir to Dargonus. A response may take some time to arrive, and it would be unwise to spend it waiting on the poisoned penal world. Undetermined. Okay, so we have to wait for something. So again, we have Kyavagama, Kyavagama, somewhere, everywhere, and Kyavagama. Okay, so Kyavagama is likely our next destination. A new challenge for me? Just trying to look for goods. For the goods. We came from there. Yeah, I remember this guy. Follow my lead! Yeah, we went. Okay. So yeah, nothing else here. Interesting. I did notice we leveled up, but I think I will probably level up on the next episode. I... Ooh, it's a colony. New contract. Inspection master. Oh. A captain who calls himself the master inspector is in the market for human merchandise. Oh, it's slavery. 
This peculiar character has repeatedly shown up on footfall to buy serfs, criminals and unfortunates detained for vagrancy. Where he takes them is unknown, but his coffers seem bottomless. I don't really feel right uh, in selling people. I think Octavia and Rigongar would be upset. There certainly is a lot that costs people. Interesting. Well, just for efficiency's sake, this would be a nice trade, I think. Profit factor is nice, but... Not gonna sell my people. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh! Oh, this is the effect from the other uh, colonies? The young rotator's decisive actions inspire confidence in his subjects. Okay. Punishment of the thinkers. Punishment of the outsiders and punishment by calculation. Viable 6 needs new convicts. Various dangerous illiterates... No, sorry. Various dangerous literates and idle thinkers could supplement the workforce. Oh, we get to choose what we send there? Oh, okay, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Player character gains the enemy of knowledge feature. Grants 5% more damage against psychers and navigators. Plus 1000 on Drusians, minus 2 complacency, plasteel and chemicals. Punishment of the outsiders. This looks cool. Uh, needs new commas. The quarries can be filled with prisoners taken from foreign worlds. Okay, we would lose efficiency, get plasteel, people and chemicals, and the cutthroat feature. Oh, <gasps> that's nice. All allies gain 10% critical damage. That is cool. And the punishment by calculation. Purchasing foreign criminals is a potential solution to this problem. Interesting. We lose security, we get plasteel, people, and chem... Okay, do we always get the same thing? Plasteel and chemicals? No. No, sorry. Um, plasteel, people, chemicals. Plasteel, people, chemicals. Plasteel and chemicals. Okay. And we get the Punisher feature. We get 10% dodge against human enemies. We can't do this because we don't have enough reputation with the Imperial Navy. I'm thinking about this one. I'm sad about losing efficiency, but at the same time, here we would lose complacency also. We get plasteel people and chemicals. This is always nice. Okay, I mean, it does say here, filled with prisoners taken from foreign worlds. It doesn't say, uh, like, innocent people that think. It says dangerous literates and idle thinkers, but... Yeah, no, I think I like this one here. Okay, I have... I have chosen. We get some new stuff afterwards, but we will look into that later. Let me just check my colonies here. Give me this. I, I have to put this on Abelard. <clears throat> I'm never doing this, but I should. Um, still in the same state. Dargonus. Same thing. And Viables. We're waiting for this. Okay. New colony. I'm happy. Uh, so, let me just check something here. Right. You might as well have another grenade. Even though we're not really using it. The, I always have the problem of... You know, using... Limited consumables. Because I always feel I might be misusing them and then I just don't use them at all. Which is kind of sad, but... Sad, but true. And I suppose I can give you this, like, over here. This costs 1 AP. We would get Strength, Toughness, and Agility. Eh. I probably won't use it either, to be honest, but...
Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we are out of here. Where is Kyavagama? We've been there. Okay, so our next path... ...would be... ...this section of planets. Because these ones already have... Um, ...a way there. For example, you see here. There's already a route. Even though it's deadly. And the same thing from here. We could just do this, right? Uh, I could chart a course over there. But I feel like I don't want to start traveling to unknown systems. Um, that the game doesn't give me a course for through natural progression. And then we have these... But where is Kyavagama? I'm not finding it. Is Kyavagama just the name of the planet and not the... Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the planet, this is the system. Kronak. So, Kronak... I also don't know where Kronak is. What the hell? Can I just not get there yet? Or do I have to, exp to like, chart courses to discover it? Okay, whatever. So, uh, I will go to Mundus Valencius. Already? It's already done, okay. Lord Captain, a disturbing report has come from the quarries of Viabo 6. The slave laborers have lost their minds. They forget how to use tools, they huddle together and continue to stare aimlessly into space, even under the lashes of the whips, ruining the mining deadlines. Some people get obsessed with using their nails to claw out the blasphemous symbols on the tools, on machines, and even on their own bodies. The most mad have painted the walls of several mines from floor to ceiling with the symbols and then gone off deep into the mining tunnels. None of them could be found. The wardens consider it a performance to divert attention away from the, es from the escapes and an impending rebellion. Okay, so first of all, what are those symbols being scratched out by the slaves? It is hard to give these drawings any sort of intelligible definition. Unnaturally round circles connected by lines. The lines are interrupted by groups of dots. The patterns can sometimes follow some sort of logic and sometimes be unique. I can provide pics of them. Cool. After examining the pict, you realize that the symbols are connected through a, a strange logical sequence. Okay. So, options. We should investigate this anomaly. I feel that something is wrong here. Have the guards monitor where the workers disappear to, or have the guards knock this love for cheap theatrics out of the slaves. Slaves' heads. This one would give me expert cryptographer, and we would lose efficiency. All allies gain seven logic, which is cool. The rotary the servants have succeeded in identifying and studying the patterns in these peculiar drawings made by convicts. This one would give me a peculiar trinket. At the start of the weather's turn, they gain two times equipped armor deflection temporary wounds. Eh. When the weather's wounds drop to zero, they fall prone and gain 10% of their maximum as temporary wounds. The weather becomes a priority target of adjacent enemies. While prone, if the weather has no other allies with more than zero wounds, they and their allies die. On the weather's next turn, they regain 30% of their wounds if they still have temporary wounds. Oh. That's actually interesting. This effect activates only once per round. So, this part here is like a, a failsafe in case somebody would die. Because it will give you an, a chance to actually heal them or bring them up or something like that. On the wearer's next turn, they regain 30% of their wounds if they still have temporary wounds. This is the cool part here. You basically heal if you have temporary wounds, which, which we can give our people kind of easily. Okay. 
and we lose security. Or we lose complacency and we get the watchdogs of Viabo 6. Harch overseers drive the crew into battle. The flagship gains plus 3 speed for the first round. Okay. So let's see what our advisors can do to change this. Spotting an intriguing pattern in the drawing of the symbols left by the prisoners. Hypothesis. They have a practical purpose. Requesting access to the mines and the right to investigate the specimen for the Adeptus Mechanicus. Disappearing prisoners? What is the point of running away from penal servitude if the entire world is a prison cell? <laughs> That's correct. No, Shireen. These ash mags have found some sort of smuggling tunnel network and are hiding there. And the drawings are their secret language, which they use to give orders to their fellow prisoners. I know some guys who can find such secret places and decipher these languages. If the slaves will continue to disappear for no reason, then unrest will soon follow, whether out of fear of disappearing themselves or out of hope for the possibility of escape. To stifle this, we have put pressure on the slaves' leaders. My experience suggests that such people can hold more sway than any warden. Okay, so now this change to the servants of the Omnisai are allowed to research any slaves that demonstrate odd behavior. And this would give us expert cryptographer and we would lose nothing. Jay, have your adroid little friends investigate exactly where my servants wandered off to. We would just get trinkets. Okay. And Abelard is right. Have the slave foreman stop this mess or else they are going to regret it. We would just get the watchdog of Viable 6. Um, I think all of these have upsides. Typically, I enjoy something that's more global than just an item. Unless this item were like... Super insanely powerful, which it doesn't seem to be. I think I will just go for this. More logic for everybody, helping us do the checks. Sure. So yeah, the servants of the, the, the Omnisai are allowed to research any slaves that demonstrate odd behavior. There is no sacrifice more worthy than the one done in the name of the search for knowledge. The wise servants of the Omnisai have interrogated the strange prisoners. Research on their brain tissue did not reveal any mutations. Those laborers who have completely lost their utility have been granted servit servitorization in order to maintain production levels. But it seems, in the end, something was found after all. The drawing of the prisoners have been too systematic. They could not simply be gibberish. The sets of repeating elements of the dashes and dots are far too similar. But if it indeed was a secret language, then, judging by its complexity and the impossibility of decoding it, the language was definitely not created by a convict. Oh, okay, we completed the, um, the project. Alright. Okay, there, there's a lot of stuff that's blocked. Let me see if some of these do not block anything. Okay. Dreamless. The convicts will be of much greater use if they are kept from sleeping by employing a small augmentation. That's so cruel, man. Uh, more efficiency and chemicals. And, and, we, and we, um, we don't lock anything out. Warp guides. There is a rumor that there are several warp guides among the convicts. Unsanctioned semblances for navigate, of navigators. It may be worth it to hunt them down and press them into service. Security. Uh, ah, and this one blocks a couple of things. I'm just curious. What is this? Vigilance. A mar a marvelous compact weapon in the form of a ring that allows the weather to use melt scorching. I mean, it's cool, but not nothing major. Profit factor and Drusian's reputation. Okay, I'm going to start with the stuff that does not block anything. I'll go for efficiency and chemicals right now. Oh, and there's another one, sorry. Ergonomics. The mining complexes are getting crowded. Individual pots and tranquilizers um, for the convicts could solve the problem. We would get two efficiency. We would block Envirodome. And the player character gains the absolute efficiency feature. All allies gain plus five commerce and plus four percent hit chance. I do enjoy the four percent hit chance. And this one blocks ergonomics. Okay, so efficiency, complacency and security, and we would get the I will fear no poison feature. All allies gain 5 to carouse and 10% toxic damage resistance. Eh, I think I prefer the other one. Okay, let's uh, in any case start with this one here. 
And... Wait, where am I? Oh, sorry. Uh, I have to go here. Yes. So, from Mundus Valencius, we are going to start traveling over here. So, reduce it to unsafe. And this is called crossbow, Crossroads of a... Oh, of a... Damn it. Of a hundred dreams. Alright. So, I'm going to leave this traveling for the next episode. So, we can explore this system in a fresh episode. And then also probably explore the rest based on what this one has to offer. I like this one here. Orcelio Prophecy. This is, I think, tied to Cassia. I'm thinking. Could be cool. Um, for now, this will be it, my friends. As always, I want to thank you all for being here with me in the channel, watching some Rogue Trader. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Questions, suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Many more videos coming out soon. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then... Stay safe, everyone.